Welcome to ECE Elimu, Learning Simplified, and welcome to this lesson. In the previous lesson, we discussed linear expansivity, and we realized that different materials have different linear expansivities. Now, in this lesson, we are going to discuss application of expansion and contraction of solids. My name is Albert. I hope you are going to enjoy this lesson. By the end of this lesson, I expect you to be able to explain the application of expansion and contraction in expansion joints in steam pipes, then fixing of railways or railway lines, and then fixing steel bridges, riveting, and in electric wires. So one of the applications of expansion and contraction in solids is in the fixing of expansion joints in steam pipes. We are going to realize that whenever we have fixing a, a steam pipe, every a short distance covered by this steam pipe, we will have an expansion joint. This expansion joint, this is the steam passing, we have steam, then we have here, we have the pipe, then we have this what we call expansion joint. Now this joint allows room or allows space for expansion when steam is passing. Remember, steam is water, water in gaseous state. And water in gaseous state, it means it is water at very high temperature. So when the water with very high temperature is passing through this pipe, which is a steam, it will make the pipe, which is in solid state, to expand. And when the pipe expands, now this uh, loop will allow the pipe to move outwards. It will allow this pipe to move outwards, hence avoiding blockage. And when the steam is not passing, now, this loop also will change shape in a way that it allows this pipe to contract. So this pipe, when it's cold, it will move like that. And then in this case, it allows this pipe to move in and avoiding brokerage. It's important to note that without this loop, the pipe is likely to break due to the force caused by expansion and the contraction of the pipe. Now, another application of contraction and expansion in solids is in the fixing of railway lines. Railway lines are constructed in sections of expansion gap. This is an expansion gap here. Expansion gap. And through this expansion gap from rail 1 to rail 2, a fish plate is used to connect these two rails. Now, this fish plate is a small belt of a metal which has bolts and the holes of the bolt holes are oval in shape to ensure that the bolts can move freely from one rail to another whenever there is expansion or contraction in the rails. Now, without these two features of oval shaped holes which allow bolts to move freely and the expansion gap, the rails are likely to bungle out. Now, for modern construction of railway lines, they use a slanting planes, like if this is the first railway line, this is the first rail, and then the second rail, they put, they put them in a slanting position, so that when there is increase in temperature, they can expand and slide off, and then whenever there is a decrease in temperature, they can also uh, slant off. In this case, we reduce the uh, brokerage or bungle out of railway lines. Now, this has led us to the third application of contraction and expansion in solids, and it is in the fixing of steel bridges. Now, in the bridges made of steel girders, these are the steel girders here, one end of this bridge is fixed. This is the first end here, which is fixed. And then the other one is placed on rollers. This uh, side two is not fixed. Not fixed means 
it is placed on these rollers here. We have the first roller there, second roller, and then the third roller. Now, the reason why it's placed on these rollers is to allow room for expansion and the contraction. Now, when the temperature is very high, these steel girders expand, and then these rollers will roll out, and then the bridge will move on this side. Now, this one, it is hot. When it is hot, it expands, and the bridge will roll out. When it is cold, when it gets cold, the, the girders will contract, and then the bridge will roll in. So this is when it is very cold. Cold, the bridge will contract, and the rollers will allow it to move freely inwards. So through this, they make this bridge to be expanding and contracting easily, hence avoiding blockage of these uh, steel girders. The fourth application of expansion and contraction in solids is in the rivets. And rivets, I'm very sure you are familiar with them. If you take your knife at home, this knife, which looks like this, at this knife handle, we have two shiny metallic uh, points like those this is what we call the rivets these are the rivets now these rivets these rivets when you are fixing them let's say you have your knife here which is very flat and thin like that and then you want to fix it on two handles like this one here the first handle is on top and then the second handle is at the bottom like that what you do, you make a hole between these three uh, sections. The first handle, the, the, the metal, which is the, 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 the knife, and the second handle. And then what you do, you now introduce a hot uh, metal rod, a hot metal rod, which is flat on one point. That's what we call a rivet. So you bring a metal rod, which is already flat at one end like that and then you fix it inside here. When you fix it inside here, when it's hot, remember when it's hot, it's, uh, it has already expanded. So when you fix it there, then you hammer now the lower part. You hammer this lower part very tightly until it holds these two metal plates closely. And then what happens when the temperature now are low, this rivet, all this metal rod which you have hammered we contract and pull these two uh, plates strongly. Now, in this case, you we will say you have done what we call riveting. You, are, you have held these two plates strongly. Now, the idea of rivet is used to hold thick metal plates in ships and containers very strongly where you cannot use a welding machine to hold two thick metal plates now the fifth and the last application of expansion and contraction in solids is in the installation of electric wires and what we are going to realize that in the morning or when the temperatures are very low the electric cables appear a short and doubt if these are the posts of the electric wires the post where the electric wires are lie on in the morning or in the cold temperatures, these wires appear straight, taut, and uh, short, short and taut. This is when the temperature is cold. But now, if you observe them when it, it is hot, when it is hot, you have the same uh, posts here, you have the same posts here, then these wires will appear long and slanted. The reason why they appear long and slanted this when it is hot is because when the temperatures increase, the wires which were short and taut will gain temperature or will gain heat and then they will expand to occupy a larger volume. Now when they occupy a larger volume, it means their length will increase and therefore they will appear slanted. Now, during installation of electric wires, they are installed in a way that they are loosely, or they are loose, like in this second diagram here. Say so that when the temperatures are low, 
they have some room where they can contract to avoid breakage or breaking of these wires. So that marks the end of our lesson today. In the next lesson, we will discuss contraction and expansion in liquids and gases.